the way that we are getting closer to that vision um, is me being on camera. And that is totally fine. Do I love being on camera and being, you know, the charismatic, hey, you know, here I am. No, but it it achieves the purpose of my personal why, our business vision, and that gets me up in the morning. This is Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio with your host, Tyler Jorgensen. All right, welcome out to Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio. I am your host, Tyler Jorgensen. And for over 10 years now, I have been interviewing entrepreneurs to talk to them about their journey, their story, and their experiences. And I'm excited to have our guest today, Julia Taylor, also known as Julia the Geek and founder of Geek Pack, because she has an amazing story about how uh, she used to be an intelligence agent and uh, all kinds of crazy things to me that seem crazy, at least. And now she helps uh, helps women to embrace their inner geek and become coders and like be business owners. And she has an amazing business. So welcome out to the show, Julia. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. Let's start with the at the end and then we're going to or the current place and then we're going to go backwards. Right. So what is Geek Pack? Sure. So Geek Pack uh, is a is my company. We empower women primarily to learn tech skills. Like at the heart of it, that is, is what we do. Give them the confidence to to learn, quote unquote, hard skills in order to charge more, get a promotion, get a job, raise their rates, work from anywhere, start their own business, whatever that looks like for them. It's just giving them that that confidence and empowerment that they can learn tech skills. Awesome. And and like, how do you do that? Do you have everyone fly in and get behind a bunch of computers or is everything remote? <laughs> I, everything is remote. The The thought of everyone flying in and getting behind <laughs> the introvert in me is like freaking out on the inside. <laughs> so it's all completely remote. We have um, a number of different online programs, online courses, um, free, paid. We have more stuff coming soon. Uh, so yeah, it's all completely remote. All right. So there is a big jump from being a uh, in the United States Department of Defense being an intelligence officer. And then now I teach women coding online, right? So how did that happen? Uh, gosh, do you want me to go back to the beginning? <laughs> yeah. yeah. When did you first like, when did you first realize that you were going to be an entrepreneur and do this? I, I think I'm still coming to grips with it, to be honest. It, it's, um, I'm not, I like to call myself an accidental entrepreneur and I, I'm still a little bit like if when I hear someone call me an entrepreneur, I'm like, who are they talking about? Is this, is that me? It, it's not a, a, a role that I'm super comfortable in because it was never something I wanted to do. I, I'm not the, the entrepreneur that, that, you know, it doesn't run through my veins. I didn't, I wasn't selling stuff when I was a kid. I don't know anyone who was an entrepreneur growing up. Right. Uh, so uh, let's say, as you, as you mentioned, I used to work for the uh, U S intelligence community. I was, I was working for the department of defense and back in 2008, I deployed to Afghanistan. That was my first deployment. Um, and while I was there, I met my now husband. Um, he is British. He was in the military. He's since retired. And we we met in Afghanistan. We fell in love. We dated somehow in, in, in Kabul, which was crazy and cool and weird all at once. And we did long distance for a long time, for, for multiple years. I deployed again. I, I was in Africa, um, the Middle East, and a lot of different places for, for years. He was deploying a lot. And uh, I finally decided I need to um, leave this line of work and move to the UK. So I did. Uh, and found myself a military wife, which I'm immensely proud of, but it also meant we moved a lot. So here I am kind of, I, I've left this great career that I had with the government. My career was progressing and I had upward career tra trajectory. And then I, I move and I'm, I'm just bouncing from nine to five to nine to five. And my career progression really nosedived. And there wasn't really remote working then. I mean, this was, this was way before COVID. Right. <laughs> I was in one of these nine to five jobs and I have no tech background. I have a degree in Russian. I, I could do basic stuff on computers and online, but nothing, no coding, no, nothing techie. And I was in a nine to five and my boss tells me to make something work on our website, the company website. And I have absolutely no idea what he's talking about, but I Google it. 
And um, I was amazed that I, within five minutes, I found this line of code and I put it in and it worked. And, and it was just that spark of, if I've just figured this out in five minutes, what could I do with that knowledge? And could this be my answer to remote working? And that's really kind of where it all got started. So in summary, uh, you met on a exotic spy mission, uh, fell in love, uh, then got a job where a boss asked you to work outside of your scope. And that led you to finding your passion. So uh, <laughs> what I mean, but how amazing. So you you that one little task, right, that probably wasn't outside of your actual job ask led you to really this journey now that where how many people do you help? You have worked with a lot of people through your through your group, right? So how many people have you guys helped kind of take this step? Yeah, thousands. Um, we we have we have a number of different products. Um, so I, I'd say you know less than ten thousand, more than five, somewhere in in that that range is where we're where we are now. And incredibly incredibly fortunate um, to not only to get to do this, but I, I sent a message to my team this morning. Like this is what we get to do for our job is 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 show other women that they can be techie if they want to be and they might really love it and they can they can take those skills and turn it into something that makes money that they can do from anywhere like that that's what we get to do so it's um yeah talk about a, a coming full circle uh never in a million years but I thought I'd be doing this and so in now running a business and an education business and that's a lot different than having a 9 to 5 right so what was one of the biggest challenges that you first hit, like what was that first big wall and how'd you overcome it? I would say work-life balance. And I think that's, um, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say it's, it's something I overcome. It's something that I'm consistently working on being, getting better at and getting my team to be, to be, to be good at. Um, so we, we work really hard to, to have a good work-life balance, but we're not always perfect and we make mistakes and we work too much and, you know, we're, we're feeling our way into it. Um, but when I, when I first started Geek Pack, kind of the, the, the education part of the business that I do full-time now for a while, I was doing, I was running my own business, working on websites with clients and, and being the service provider. And I've, I've shifted into teaching other women how to learn these tech skills to be a service provider. And when I, it was, we were traveling full-time in an RV. So my husband retired from the military. We sold everything, moved into an RV. And um, it was while I was traveling that people said, I want to learn the skills that you have learned to be able to do what you do. And that's kind of where that shift happened. And I was working nonstop. And I know you have to work really hard to to build a business. Um, my word, like we're, we're not choosing the easy route. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but as I have, um, as the business has progressed and as we've kind of gotten into what we're doing now, I am, I have an amazing team and we're, we're, we all work hard, but we try to play hard as well. We, we, we take time off. We have monthly um, Fridays off where, you know, it's a self-care day for everyone. And, and we're trying to instill that in our community and with our students as well, that, that importance of don't trade your nine to five for a 24 um, seven. And, and that's something that we're, we're, we're constantly working on to try and get better at. Yeah, and I think this this comes up a lot when we're talking about the difference between being self-employed and being a business owner, right? Because self-employed, you end up being trapped like exactly what you said. You traded a nine to five for a 24-7. But you have to be thinking about, even if you're an employee of one or a team of one, it, what does this business look like, right? When are the business hours? How, do, how should it work? Uh, on this show, work-life balance probably comes up as probably in the top 10 subjects with entrepreneurs. And oftentimes what we what we kind of settle down into is the idea of work life harmony where it's it's impossible to truly have a balance because there are seasons where one needs to take over and take a priority and so the the concept of like kind of allowing the two to work have a good healthy blend right a good healthy harmony yeah. um symbiosis if you will so what what are some tips that you have found for you maybe not your whole community and everyone else but what helps keep you in harmony uh getting away from technology, getting away from my phone, going places where there is no connection. Because Remove the temptation. 
Exactly. Exactly. And that that's really, that's my happy place. Not in the sense that all of this doesn't make me happy. I mean, I, I absolutely, I love my business. I love my team. I love my community. But if, if it's, if it's constant, um, I just want to serve and I just want to help and I want to grow and I want to do all the things, but there, there leaves no room for me to, to just stop and kind of pause and think and, and reflect and it's only in the last probably year that I've given myself the permission to do that. And and I regularly um, go off, my husband and I, we go camping in the middle of nowhere. And and when I don't have the potential for distraction, that's when I get my best ideas, my, my biggest ahas of this is how we take things to the next level. And I it's hard as a doer because I I get my value and my worth getting things done and you know t- taking things off the to do list and it's been a real um, shift in mindset of an identity um, for me to go to my value and my worth needs to come in strategizing and what what are the next big things who do I need to talk to what rooms do I need to be in virtual rooms as an introvert <laughs> sure. who do I need to um, build relationships with where do I need to go outside my comfort zone to take the business to the next level and trust that that's where my real value will come in and and kind of see that growth of the business. Yeah, that is that is a big transition to realize your worth has a like you can have worth in your company and a lot of other things than just output. Now you with your career coming from, you know, you said you have a degree in Russian and you uh, spent time as an intelligence officer. Do any of those skills help you today? Like, are there lessons from your former life that you get to still apply into your business? I think the a lot of what I did when I was in the, the the job with the government was I did a lot of briefing very high level people um, and collecting information from a lot of different sources and avenues, bringing it all together, consolidating it, and then presenting it in a very short, concise way. Um, and and the the types of people, especially when I was in Afghanistan, you know, it was it was four star generals that I would speak to regularly, and that was terrifying. Uh, but I, it was it was that confidence that I had in myself that I I knew the information, they did not. So how did I take that information that I knew, give it to them, so they could make big, very important life changing decisions? And I think it's now in the position that I'm in, which I am fully stepping in as, as a CEO, as the, the 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 visionary of the business. That's when I'm tapping back into what I used to do now more than ever. Is there a little bit of a difference where now when you do your briefing, you also have you need to have persuasion? Where like maybe in the past you had to like maintain a neutral perspective, but now you have to you still have to brief and summarize points. But you also want people to make a specific decision, like as a oh, leader, yeah. and as a salesperson, right? Absolutely. And fortunately, um, I've been doing a lot of things like this in the last probably six months or so. And fortunately, because I, I love what I do so much and I feel so passionate about it, it's easy for me to um, have that extra bit of persuasion. And uh, because I believe in what we're doing, I believe in my team, my students, my community, our vision. I believe in all of it and I know we can achieve it. And that comes across in my energy and my, my charisma and I'm exhausted at the end of it (laughs) and I need to go and be in the middle of nowhere to kind of recharge. But yes, absolutely. Um, that, that persuasion level is, is very important, especially with, with the, the next level that we're taking the business. Yeah. So you've helped thousands of people, uh, make this transition, make these, you know, start learning, coding, gaining new skills. As people learn, what is a common obstacle that they face in moving from learning mode into application mode? Oh, gosh. Finding clients and putting themselves out there easily. Um, I would say the majority of my students um, are um, introverts, just like me. And we we hear that all the time. We just we, we had an event last week called Geek Fest. And, and the thing that constantly comes up is 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 confidence, is um, fear of putting themselves out there and the stories that we tell ourselves in our head that are not based on fact or evidence, but it's just stories that we we, we tell ourselves and constantly kind of running in our head. 
um, and and that putting yourself out there to find clients because learning is easy. We all, especially all of us in our community, we love, we love to learn. We want to learn more, but we, we, we rely on that as a crutch. I got to learn more before I can do, I got to learn more before I can do. And that's one of the biggest things that we do in our program and in our community is, yeah, learning is great, but you're always going to be learning. Things are always going to change in tech. So I challenge them to, to do small things. And I, I have, program called a, the introverts pre-launch marketing blueprint so it's just little things it's it's just a, a little a little step here and a little bit here so it's not a massive whoa that's way outside my comfort zone it's just a tiny bit and and just trying a few things to to see what feels right and what sticks and what works and what doesn't work and and then kind of feel feeling into it rather than that huge go throw yourself out there and start telling everyone and and that sort of thing yeah, try to get loud when you're you don't even like speaking up, right? It's uh, yeah. it's a bit bit of a challenge, and so I mean you have um, a Facebook community, you have a, a coding challenge, and like you said, you have Geek Fest, Geek Kapalooza, you have all these different things. What's come? You've got some big things coming up too. What are some big things coming up in the in the Geek Pack world? So the big thing uh, that we've got coming up is. Um, I have somehow um, this kind of goes into that persuasion and 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 the 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 influence and and putting myself in rooms with people who who have the power to make big decisions, building relationships way outside my comfort zone. I I've recently been uh, negotiating and and discussing with a number of publicly traded um, education technology companies, um, all big names that people would know and. Um, I have decided to partner with Udemy, uh, which is is the the biggest um, kind of online learning platform, and and we are going to work together, and and I I, I will be able to combine their content, all the, that's, you know, that is excellent, that's been around for years, that that takes people and gives them enough knowledge to to be able to charge more, get a promotion, get a raise, get a job, whatever that tech skill, that kind of vocational skill is that they need. We are going to combine that, you know, marry it with all the magic that comes from Geek Pack. The the community, the there's no such thing as a stupid question, live cohort facilitation, um, my team, you know, supporting them, encouraging them, helping them learn these skills to be able to you know, take the next step and whatever that that is towards their why. So, so I'm really, really excited about the 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 collaboration and partnership that that Geek Pack will have with with Udemy because it's it's just such a nice um, combination of community support, um, actually uh, retention, actually getting through tech content with excellent content that exists from a platform that's been around for years. Yeah, and what a what a great way to now have a bunch of content that you don't have to worry about creating, right? Things that maybe aren't your area of genius. You don't have to go figure that out now. You yep. can just like, oh, use this course or take or learn this lesson. And that's amazing. Um, so you again, you help so many people get started, but there's gotta be there's a lot of stumbling blocks and a lot of challenges. Uh, what is one thing that you wished you had learned when you were at the beginning of your journey? Like, what do you find like you're, you're telling everyone, I wish I had known this, or I wish I would have learned this sooner, or I wish I would have, you know, been brave and, and cause you're also, you're an introvert, but you're, you've got a pretty good size social media following on both Instagram and TikTok and right. So you do non-introverted things. Um, what do you find, you know, the common advice that you keep help giving others? Yeah. And I, and people ask me that all the time, like, because, because I, I am, very comfortable off camera. <laughs> How is it that I do so much on camera? And this is probably something that I I wish I'd um, I'd known at the time that I I I do now. Is and this is something that we get our students to do almost immediately when they when they kind of come into our world is to to figure out what your why is. If you can really understand, and it's kind of kind of your mission. Um, what is it? Why is it that you're doing this hard thing? Because you're you're giving up a nine to five and you're choosing something that is harder because you want an end result. What is that end result? And and to really figure that out and drill down and and fully understand you're putting yourself through hard times 
in order for this positive result? What what is that? And keep that in mind because when you have hard times, know that you're doing it for a reason. So we want our students to identify that. We actually send out, uh, I literally just did it. We send out postcards um, to all of our new students. And on the back of it is a place for them to write down their why, to put it somewhere, to constantly remind themselves. And we give them permission to change it. So I didn't, I was just, you know, doing things as and when they they came up for me. I didn't really have that why. Right. And it all comes back to right now, my company mission is very, very clear. And the only way, not the only way, but right now in this current season of business, the way that we are getting closer to that vision um, is me being on camera. And that is totally fine. Do I love being on camera and being, you know, the charismatic, Hey, you know, here I am. No, but it it achieves the purpose of my personal why, our business vision, and that gets me up in the morning, and that gets me on camera, and that gets me doing interviews and talking to people and going outside my comfort zone. Because the more people, the more women we can reach, the more women we we can impact, the more women we can empower to learn tech skills. That's that's it. That that's why that's what I why I do what I do, and that's why I am on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. Some people struggle with this. We already talked about work life harmony a little bit, and so I'm I don't think you're going to struggle with this question, but some entrepreneurs do, and to me, it's very telling. To me, business isn't about just that twenty four seven grind. It's about creating a lifestyle that you actually love and want to have, um, and having things that you do that are not part of the business. What's one item on your personal bucket list you're going to do or accomplish in the next 12 months? I would know if you said more than 12 months, um, but in the next 12 months, personal bucket list is is significantly more camping in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, Are there and, any any new spots you're hoping to hit? Or just uh, more, more middle of nowheres? More middle of nowhere. <laughs> It's an active, actively trying to find um, more middle of nowhere is where where there is no service uh, it, within um, driving distance. We've got a, a new a new camper coming. That means we can get out further uh, for longer. Um, you know, trip down to Baja, uh, more in in the mountains, more in the desert, um, maybe up to Alaska, but more middle of nowhere time. All right, but now you have me uh, my curiosity peaked. What's more than 12 months? A significantly, a significant length trip um, through South America. Cool. So awesome. Yeah. So that's not coming in the next year, but it's happening. It's going to, yes. it's going to be done. I love that. Yeah. Um, any, so where should people go if they want to learn more about Geekpack? Geekpack.com or just Google Geekpack. Sure. Um, all right. I love it. I think uh, everyone, I hope you go find uh, Julia on Instagram and TikTok and give her all the hearts and likes and follows. Uh, but what she's doing with Geekpack is really, really cool. There's a lot that you can learn literally from her by taking her courses and her challenges, but also just from what she's doing uh, to empower a community. I think it's really, really great. And so to all my biz ninjas, wherever you're watching, listening, streaming, or whatever you may be doing, it's your turn to go out and do something.